Hey folks, it's Mike Can. I just wanted to uh, talk about a friend who just sent me a, a quick email on uh, his going to the FBI office in Bangor, Maine this week. Uh, Captain Joint sent me an email, CJ Bond, you can call him Captain Joint, he used to be a Mass Can Normal board member. Um, I'm just going to read this quick email and uh, tell you what I think about the whole thing. Uh, the, the email is titled, Captain Joint Takes Info on Mass Confidential Informant Gerald Battistoni to the FBI. As of a few weeks ago, it was made public that the FBI is now looking at Gerald Battistoni, a confirmed confidential informant and convicted child rapist in the cold case murder of Molly Bish. I've just gone to the Bangor branch of the FBI to have them look at Gerald Battistoni for a very di for a very different reason. A SWAT raid on my home on March 27, 2003 was based on an affidavit claiming I sold marijuana to a confidential informant. Confidential informant number 62, Gerald Battistoni. On three dates. On all three dates I was documented in the hospital. The affidavit was signed by Special Agent Scott E. Haley of the Eastern Hampton County Nar Narcotic Task Force. I was documented in the hospital. The affidavit was signed by Special Agent Scott E. Haley of the Eastern Hampton County Narcotic Task Force. This raid on my home I now believe was an attempt to steal the land by a crooked task force in Holland town officials at that time. I've supplied the FBI with the affidavit as well as my hospital records, de de depositions of Chief No More Kevin P. Gleason and Special Agent Scott E. Haley and shown them Xerox copies of the money from the three buys that never were. Manufactured evidence the police supplied the court also a crime. I am now living in Maine and have started the investigation at the Bangor office. Anyone with information on crooked Landales in Holland or the surrounding area should contact the Bangor FBI office at 207-947-6670. If I am lying about this, I am wasting the time of the FBI, a crime I can be arrested for. When the truth of my claims against these police officers are checked out and proven true, these officers should be arrested for perjury and manufacturing false evidence. Let's see if the system really works. Signed, C.J. David Bunn. Um, you know, it, it speaks for itself. You know, C.J. was set up by crooked police officers. I'm going to say that as a fact because I've looked at the evidence and I have no doubt that what C.J. is saying is the truth and that this did indeed happen. Um, he was set up by a confidential informant. They were using a confidential informant who turns out to be a child molester. Is that someone that the police should trust as a confidential informant? A child molester? That is the number one suspect. Well, maybe not number one, but one of the top suspects. Definitely a, a, a chief suspect at this point in the murder and disappearance of Molly Bish. If you don't know who Molly Bish is, look her up. M O L L Y B I S H. Molly Bish. The gentleman that they think that might have murdered this young teenage girl was a child molester. One thing I'm very confident about related to uh, CJ is that these two police officers and the entire task force are very sorry that they ever messed with CJ Bunn. They thought that uh, they had just another hippie that was going to roll over for them. I was going to uh, crack under the pressure from from the government coming crashing through his door, breaking down his door, to come into his house to steal his property based on the false, false evidence from a false, fake, confidential informant. Uh, CJ will never do that. CJ's always going to keep pursuing this, keep on this, until he gets some type of justice for what happened to him and his family. This task force, this Eastern Hampton County Narcotic Task Force, they were using a child rapist as a confidential informant. I mean, what more do you need to know about this war on drugs? They're setting up innocent people for things that they did not do using child rapists. Confidential informants, we, we need to get rid of them. This is, this, is, this is the most abusive practice that the police use of these confidential informants. There's so much abuse that takes place because of this. 
this is a perfect example. You have a you have a child monster that they've that they're giving money, they're giving support to to set people up for drugs. And in this case, in the case of C.J. Bunn, C.J. Bunn had never ever met Gerald Battistoni. He had, he he had according to the two you know the two police officers that signed the affidavits and the subpoenas and all this other these search warrants. They believed that Battistoni had been to his house and sold and, and, and bought drugs from CJ three different times, but he had never been to CJ's house. CJ had never met Gerald Battistoni. This is outrageous. Hopefully, the FBI does something on this. I would love to see the FBI open this up. I can't believe that these two officers, Kevin P. Gleason and Scott E. Haley, are still walking around and have not been charged for the crimes that they did against CJ Bond and his family. It's outrageous. There should be an investigation. There should be a court case. These guys should be brought up on charges. And uh, Gerald Battistoni, I mean, we, we need to know if he, he did kill Molly Bitch. We need to know how many people he set up that were innocent as a confidential informant working for the police. We need to know this. And uh, I'm glad to know CJ, and I'm glad that he's not going to quit, and that these police officers know that they did wrong, and that it will follow them around for the rest of, of their life. There is no way to get away from it. You Google their names, you, you're you immediately going to find out uh, what they did against C.J. Bunn with this confidential informant. And that makes me very happy. I'm very happy that C.J. Bunn uh, has continued to, to push this and make sure that people are aware of it, get the word out. And now he's taking it to the FBI in the Bangor office. That's great news. And hopefully he gets some justice real soon. I would love to see the FBI investigate this. I would love to find out if uh, Battistoni truly did kill Molly Bish. Uh, isn't this totally ironic that the, the police are using a child molester to set up people for pot? And, 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 and fraudulently setting up people for pot. C.J. Bunn was never a pot dealer. He did not sell pot to anybody. He was in the hospital dying when... Gerald Battistoni said he bought pot from CJ at his house. I mean, what if, what if, what if that had, it hadn't happened? What if CJ hadn't luckily been in the hospital fighting for his life? You know, this would have to turned out totally different. CJ probably would have been brought up on charges, even though he was completely innocent. That never happened because the police realized how, how bad, how badly deep in dog doo-doo they really were when uh, they found out that CJ was in the hospital.